Good morning. It is Sunday, December the 27th, the last Sunday of the year. And this past week, I've been thinking quite a lot about harmony. Now, the word harmony is defined as the quality of forming a pleasing and consistent whole. Some synonyms for harmony are balance, symmetry, blending. And we're familiar with this idea basically from singing or from music. For those of you all who were able to listen to those videos uh, this past Thursday, Christmas Eve, and for those of you who weren't able to listen to it, I apologize. I need to figure out a little bit better way to do that. But anyway, for those of you all who were able to listen, you'll readily recognize that it sounded a whole lot better with harmony than with just me singing by myself. And for those of you all who listen to the praise team or congregational singing on Sunday or to a band or to an orchestra, you'll readily recognize that the music, the singing sounds a lot better when there are different parts. And typically it is soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And when all of those four parts are there, it sounds much better than just one part singing or playing by itself. And the Apostle Paul addresses something like that in his letter to the saints in Corinth. Those of you who are familiar with his first letter, or what we call 1 Corinthians, will understand that there were a lot of problems among the congregation, among the saints there in the city of Corinth. There were a lot of divisions. There were a lot of cliques in the congregation, and he addresses that uh, several times. But in chapter 12, he uses our physical body as a figure of speech to teach these individuals about harmony. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? And so again, the Apostle Paul is making the point that the saints in Corinth had different talents, different abilities, different gifts. They were not all the same. And God made our physical body with eyes and hands and a nose and ears and arms and legs and different internal organs. And when they all work together as God designed them, then our physical body works to works the way God wants it to work. And so it is with the church. Now going back to the idea of music, not everybody can sing soprano, not everybody can sing alto, not everybody can sing bass, not everybody can sing tenor. And there are some of us who have difficulty carrying a tune in a bucket, and I understand that. But when we work together in harmony, when we achieve that symmetry, that balance, it is beautiful. And Paul also addresses this in his letter to the saints at Ephesus. 
And he, meaning God, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, and listen to this, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. When each part is working properly. Now, if I understand that correctly, what that means is that there are no unnecessary parts. Some of us have had the tendency to think that we don't matter. Some of us have the tendency to think that there's nothing that we can do. That we are just one individual, that we are such a small part. That if we were not here, we wouldn't be missed. And that our absence wouldn't be noted. And the church doesn't need us anyway. And that simply is not true. I guarantee you, you take those songs that was played Thursday and take out the alto part. And you'll quickly realize that something is wrong. That something is missing. Harmony, balance, a coordinated and pleasing whole. That's how God designed the church. We all have a part to play in this. We all have a responsibility to fulfill. We all need one another. We need one another to play their part, to fulfill their role, to use their God-given gifts and talents and abilities, as the Apostle Paul wrote, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. We're getting ready to start a new year, and it's, it's somewhat surprising to me uh, a lot that is being said is that we'll be glad when 2020 is over with and 2021 is here. Now, I think I know what they mean by that. I don't think anybody thinks that at midnight on Thursday, December the 31st, the COVID-19 virus is going to go, oh, oh, it's a new year. I just need to disappear. It's not. And I don't think the individuals who are intent on sowing hatred in this city and in this country and around the world are all of a sudden going to wake up New Year's Day and go, oh, I don't hate anymore. But I don't know what happened, but I don't hate anybody anymore. There are still going to be people in the new year that are intent on sowing hatred and con causing conflict and being divisive. Now, it would be wonderful if that would happen if on Friday, January 1st, all of this hatred and divisiveness would just, and this COVID-19 virus would just simply disappear and everything would be hunky-dory, but I don't think it's going to be that way. But if you've been struggling with wondering what part you can play in the church, what role God has given you in this congregation to be a shining light in this community. Let me suggest to you that you find out what that gift is that God has given you. And you make a resolution to put it to work. All of us are needed. All of us are important. We need to develop that harmony 
that balance, that symmetry, that coordination, so that we can be the light, and so that we can be the salt that God wants us to be, so that we can make a difference in this community, and in this state, and in this country, and around the world. I pray that you'll have a great week. I pray that you'll have a happy new year. And that we will all resolve to find out the gift that God has given us. And put that gift to work so that we can build this body up in love. Have a great week.